As part of my graduate research, I utilized a technique called laser ablation coupled with inductively coupled plasma mass spectrometry, or LAICPMS. And in our system, like I think in most laser ablation systems, we utilized an ND YAG laser. And the, that stands for neodymium butyrium aluminum garnet. So let's take a look at that, starting with the end part, garnet. YAG isn't garnet as we typically think of it, and it isn't really even garnet at all. It's a synthetic glass, but it does share some commonalities with garnet, and that's why it has that in the name, where garnet is a mineral group and not just a specific mineral. So garnet can be almondine or spessartine. There's a lot of variation in the component cations and anions in there. And the general formula for garnet is X3, Y2, SiO4, 3 where X and Y are cations, and SiO4 is the tetrahedra framework of the mineral. Now in YAG, the formula is Y3AL5O12, and so alumina takes the place of silica, hence alumina in the name. Then yttrium is the main cation, so that's why that's it's YAG, yttrium aluminum garnet, and neodymium is a dopant, typically at about one atomic percent or so, and neodymium can be substituted for other rare earth elements like yttrium and ytterbium if you want different types of lasers. Yttrium, I think, can also be substituted for other elements like vanadium for a different type of laser. Neodymium is the primary dopant because with a little bit of neodymium, you get better gain at lower excitation levels and pump efficiencies. Most commonly, and what was in the system I used, neodymium YAG has an effective wavelength of 1064 nanometers and in the system I used, that went through a couple of frequency doublers and got down to 266 nanometers, which is 1064 divided by four. That gives you a lot higher energy pulse at a very small spot size. And we needed very small spot sizes because we needed to sample you know, small crystals in rocks. And so we were used spot sizes of like five to 10 micrometers, at least half the size of a very fine piece of hair. Anyway, I brought this all up because I spent all this time using neodymium YAG lasers and the systems, and I never really took a look at the component materials until now. And I can tell you, it's real pretty. It doesn't really, it doesn't look like this straight out the box. It does cut real nice though. And YAG was actually a diamond simulant for a number of years. Starting around 1969, Bell Laboratories introduced it on the diamond market as a diamond simulant, or fake diamond, whatever you want to call it. And it was actually one of the more popular varieties of fake diamonds until cubic zirconia came on the market in the late 70s. And nowadays, YAG is used in the industry that it was originally created for, which is lasers. I don't know that neodymium YAG crystal is actually in here, but it could very well be. I think they're very common now and pretty cheap to make, especially small pieces like you would need in something like this. The AG has a hardness of eight to eight and a half, so it's not diamond levels toughness. It's similar to topaz, you know, not quite corundum, or it's maybe similar to a very hard garnet, but that eight and a half to 10 might not seem like a lot of difference, but it's not a linear scale. The difference between this and diamond is probably on the order of a factor of 200 or so in terms of toughness and resistance to scratching. YAG is grown in columns and you can just take the little chunk of it and stick it in a piece and use that as your laser source, excite it with some battery power. It's grown in kind of a spiral pattern and so there are a couple of things that can go wrong like bubbles or you know this crystallization isn't quite uniform enough and in that case the YAG is essentially worthless in the industry but we can take advantage of that as fasters and cut pretty nice samples out of it and give new life to this very cool material. 